My name is Carrie Walker and I'll be facilitating the Villages Health presentation on fall prevention. Please keep in mind that the content in this presentation is for only, only for educational purposes and should never take place from direct advice from your healthcare professional. Let's take a look at the impact of falls. Every year, 3 million older adults are treated in the emergency departments for fall injuries. They are the leading cause of traumatic brain injury as well as hip fractures. In fact, overall, falls are the leading cause of injury among older adults. One out of three adults age 65 and older falls each year. I want to take a moment here to define what a fall is. Oftentimes, if someone is asked if they've fallen, they will say no, even though you've clearly seen them fall. That is because they're defining whether they are deciding whether or not they have fallen based on the cause of the fall. A fall is actually defined as any time there's a change in level from a higher to a lower position, either from standing to sitting or sitting to being on the floor, regardless of the cause. Unfortunately, a lot of people will say, well, no, I didn't fall. There was an unexpected curb in the parking lot that I tripped over, or the dog suddenly ran in front of me, or I tripped over that, that floor rug, but that wasn't my fault. I didn't fall. Risk factors for falls often include changes in our bodies as we age taking a look at an increase in muscle weakness, especially in the legs, problems that developed in terms of gait and balance, postural hypotension, our reflexes are slowing down. Foot problems can also contribute to risk for falls if they're not combated with safe footwear. Sensory problems with our eyes and our ability to sense the floor relative to our foot position in hearing problems can all contribute to a higher, putting us at a higher risk for fall. Confusion, acute or chronic through a, a cognitive or neurological condition can increase our risk for falls, as well as multiple medications. Let's take a look then on how we can reduce our risk of falls. If we take a look at what the risk factors are, Reducing our risk has to do with how do we modify those risk factors in our life through lifestyle choices and changes. First of all, when it comes to lower body weakness, we can choose to be more physically active, making sure that our exercise routine specifically includes exercises to strengthen our lower body. We can regularly review our medications with our pharmacist. If it's possible that um, we have we're on more than four medications, and understanding that any of the um, interactions could also increase your risk of falls. Since sensory uh, changes in sensory systems can occur as we get older, we wanna make sure that we're monitoring our vision and hearing and blood pressure on a regular basis, that we can track those changes and make adjustments. We're going to make sure that we choose safe footwear based on changes in our body, choosing function over fashion. And then we're gonna look at how we can make our home safer. Starting with exercise, it's important to make sure that all four of these components are included in our physical activity program. Oftentimes, we tend to favor one over the others. For example, many older adults will say that their main source of exercise is walking that night might not include sufficient upper body strengthening exercises. Walking is good for your heart and it's important to have a cardiovascular component to strengthen your heart, to pump blood and oxygen through all parts of your body. It's also important though to have those strength exercises. Every decade after the age of 50, we lose 10% of our overall body strength. If you consider that every time you move, that involves a muscle, it underscores how important it is to keep that strength, to do the things that we wanna do every day. So that if we're not, if we 
don't have strength building exercises built in, that means we're actually losing strength and muscle as we age if we're not doing anything to compensate. You want to make sure that there's activities in your physical um, roots, physical exercise routine that help you with balance. At the end of the presentation, we'll go over some examples. Flexibility is important to include as well and is often overlooked. Anytime we strengthen or are exercising a muscle that involves a contraction, we typically are shortening that muscle. So therefore, it's important to include flexibility exercises in which we extend those muscles or lengthen them again. By sitting very frequently, we shorten muscles in our legs, such as our hip flexors, which are in the front of our, or the top of our leg, responsible for our ability to pick up our foot. The hamstrings in the back side of our legs often stay shortened and can pull on our low back. So just as it's important to have strength building exercises, you want to make sure to include flexibility. I don't think there's any argument that most medications have side effects. The more medications you're taking, the more likely they are to interact with each other. Taking more than four medications can put you at a significantly higher risk for falls. Anytime you look at the list of side effects and you see something listed like changes in vision, dizziness, lightheadedness, drowsiness, or impaired alertness or judgment is going to put you at a higher risk for falls. Please work with your doctor to understand how all these different medications work together or could be affecting you. The pharmacist is also another great resource that can walk you through this. This next slide shows the most common high-risk fall medications. But if you look at them carefully, you recognize that these are extremely common and used by most people at one time or another. They include antidepressants, anti-anxiety, antihistamines. Thinking right now with the, the changes in the weather, we have a lot of pollen. People are taking allergy medications, a lot of over-the-counter medications to control, maybe running nose, um, aches and, and pains, all those can contribute to increase your lightheadedness. So make sure when, to talk to your doctor, not only about prescription drugs, but also over-the-counter forms of things that you might be taking. When we're driving our car, we have access to a dashboard that tells us what's going on under the hood. Is the temperature getting too hot? Is there enough water? Does it need more gas? We need to think about our health screenings as, as providing information similar to a dashboard in our car. We don't know what's happening in, underneath the surface of our bodies. High blood pressure is considered a silent killer because most oftentimes people are not aware that they have high blood pressure. So you want to make sure to schedule and take advantage of regular screening by your physician to determine if you are at a higher risk for blood pressure, which can cause dizziness or lightheadedness. Um, make sure that your hearing is tested on a regular basis. Make sure that you have updated hearing aids um, available for you so that you are aware of things going on around you and you can respond accordingly without having to lose your balance. Vision is one of the most important senses in, when it comes to maintaining upright balance. If you have any doubt about this, the next time you're standing up, if there's something um, safe for you to grab onto, go ahead and you close your eyes for a couple moments. Most of us will begin to, to be aware of increased sway as we have our eyes closed and we're in a standing position. This il illustrates the importance of having well-lit areas and the importance of lighting and keeping ourselves from falling. Choosing safe footwear. Changes in our bodies that are affecting our ankle strength, our ankle flexibility, um, affecting our foot's ability to sense the floor due to neuropathy, any pain-related issues, bunions, those can all put us at a higher risk for falls unless we compensate for that through stronger, sturdier shoes. Fortunately, living in this area of the villages, there's starting to be more fashionable shoes that are also very good and functional and provide good structure. 
What you want to look for is a, a high wide toe box. Make sure that your toes have sufficient uh, room to move around and that they can, they're not in pain crushed together. You want to have a non skid sole. Water on the floor in the bathrooms or water a slick driveway can put you at a much higher risk for falls. Make sure that you have a good supply of sturdy shoes and not just one pair of good shoes. Because if you think about it, it just takes one time when you're maybe wearing your cute jeweled flip flops to run outside and say hi to a neighbor. But perhaps there's been some dew on the on the driveway and because you're wearing those shoes, you slip and fall. Even though the majority of the rest of your day, you're always wearing those sturdy shoes. Just keep that in mind. You're looking for a, a shoe that provides a lot of structure and can support your ankle so that your ankle's not rolling in. Now for looking at your house. Next time you're at your front door about to enter your house, I want you to think of yourself as a real estate agent coming in to view your house objectively. And as a real estate agent, you have an elderly client who's at a very high fall risk. And that client is interested in renting your house fully furnished to use during their snowbird season. Begin to look at the pathway as you enter the door, for, leading from the door to all the major rooms of the house. Are the pathways clear or is there a lot of clutter? Are they well lit at all different times of day? Is there sufficient handrails or grab bars if the person loses their balance and has to, to grab for something to keep themselves upright? And then you're going to be thinking about where are the items that you use most frequently to, uh, to do your daily tasks of cleaning, um, eating, getting dressed, and you're going to evaluate if they're in a safe place to reach. Start look, picking up clutter. Sit down in that living room and look around through your, that real estate's eyes. Is there a bunch of clutter around the chair that you frequently sit in? Snacks, knitting needles, yarn, books, uh, coupons, scissors that you're cut, using cutout coupons, crossword puzzle books. Oftentimes we, lead, we relocate objects in our house based on convenience not paying attention to the fact that we're really cluttering up our walking area. Pay attention to pet bowls and electrical and phone cords. Electrical and phone cords are items that we typically will keep out of sight because we're aware that they could pose a trip hazard. But what about if you've just gotten off the phone and you have an, you've pulled the phone cord out across the, the room? Were you using a calculator that you plugged into the wall and then moved it across to the table and now the cord is stretched out across the room? Remove any throw rugs. If you have to have a throw rug that you can't live without, consider using a non-slip uh, or double-sided tape or perhaps see if there's a non-slip version of it. Many times when people are looking for throw rugs, they forget to consider their bathroom where they will use a bath mat or a towel when they're getting out of the shower, not thinking that this is a throw rug, but this is certainly an area where it's easy to trip and fall, especially if there's water on the floor. Make sure to arrange the furniture to give yourself plenty of room to walk around, especially if you have somebody living with you that could easily fall and or has a walker. You want to make sure that there's a larger range of motion for them to navigate around. You may have to reorganize some things, um, pack some things away, um, relocate items that so they're easier to grab for that are commonly used if a person has a wheelchair or walker or a cane. Lighting is essential. When you're checking your house for lighting, if you're thinking of you're that real estate agent again, make sure that you're evaluating the light in your house during different times of day, not just during the bright afternoon hours when there's a lot of daylight coming through the windows. You want to make sure to evaluate the lighting in your house during the evening when it's more on the dark side. You may have to, find, to swap out some light bulbs to provide greater light in certain areas. Making sure to pay attention to the bathroom and hallways. 
Oftentimes when we get up in the middle of the night, we're concentrated on what we have to do. We need to get to that restroom or that kitchen because we want to get something to drink or eat. We're not focused on what's in front of us and what could possibly be a trip hazard. One of the reasons we want to have uh, sufficient lighting is not just to be able to make sure that we're not running, we're running into something, but also to be able to improve our depth perception and ability to see changes in levels in the ground and keep ourselves balanced. Another strategy can be to keep a, a flashlight handy by your bed. If you're sharing the bed with someone else and the light will bother them. Grab bars are a great low cost addition to any house to keep you safer. Oftentimes there's a grab bar already in your shower, but also consider if you are sharing that house with someone that has a different height than you, does it now make sense to have another grab bar where they might grab instead of you? Are you losing balance sufficiently enough that you might have to put them on two different walls of your shower? Really go through and kind of walk through your daily routine in the bathroom, identifying possible areas where you might grab through the wall to keep yourself balanced. As you can see in the photo in the bottom, it's possible to put grab bars above the towel bar. So while you're reaching for the towel uh, to take it off of the, um, the rack, you can be holding on to firmly to one of those bars. Oftentimes when people are going from a seated to a standing position off of the toilet, they might lose their balance. Go ahead and plan for that and have a grab bar on the other side of the cabinet, something that they could put their weight on. Oftentimes, we're not taking to, into consideration that as we age, we're less stable. We're going to continue to do all the different activities of cleaning and daily living around our house that we've always done. So you might want to consider that now reaching up over the stove for that big strainer or getting uh, going up to get your Christmas items out of the attic may require a safer strategy. Think ahead. If I have to get my Christmas boxes down out of the attic, maybe I can have my friend or neighbor or my, my son help them help me get those down. Keeping step stools handy is of critical importance. When a need arises to reach for something and we don't have a tool such as a step stool to, to help us get to it safely, Oftentimes we err on the side of poor judgment and just decide that we're going to reach for it anyway, taking our chances. So be prepared and have step ladders readily available. Consider relocating certain objects in uh, your pantry that you use more frequently and getting rid of others that you don't need. Move things down from high, high shelves down to lower shelves. You may also consider taking large items like dish, uh, dish soap or laundry soap out of off of top shelves and keeping it down more toward the ground. All that said, it's possible that you might fall. It's important to think about what will I do if that happens. By having an idea ahead of time, it will cut down on your anxiety if that actually happens. If you fall, you want to allow sufficient time to remain on the floor or the ground just to get your bearings. To let your blood pressure return to normal and the diz any Disney dizziness to subside. Decide if you're hurt. If you decide that you are hurt, do your best to call out for help or try to make it to a phone. Getting up too quickly or in the wrong direction could make an, any injury worse. If you decide that you can get up safely, roll onto one side. You don't want to grab for something and try to pull yourself directly up. Once you're over on your side, rest again until your body and blood pressure adjusts. You've got your bearings. Then slowly get up onto your hands and knees and crawl to a sturdy chair. I will say that you should evaluate how sturdy the chair is. If it's a dining room chair that could easily be uh, pulled over and that's your only option, you want to make sure to be careful about where you're grabbing it. You don't want to put yourself into a position where you're going to pull the chair over on yourself. Put your hands on the chair seat 
and then slide one foot forward so that it's flat on the floor. So one, one knee is, is bent. Keeping the other leg on the, um, from this kneeling position, slowly rise and turn your body to sit in the chair. Again, giving yourself sufficient time to recover. After the fall, you want to talk to your, your doctor. Unfortunately, as you probably noticed in the, one of the first slides that we viewed, only half of the people tell their doctor that they have fallen. A lot of fear of loss of independence um, is behind this. But uh, you want to think of falls as a symptom. And as with any, with any disease, early detection is preferable. A fall is a symptom that something has changed in your body. Something that could be addressed through a lifestyle change, like increasing your physical activity program and gaining strength. Or it could be a deeper indicator of a neurological condition, which could include a cognitive disorder, uh, Parkinson's disease, um, a, a problem with blood pressure, other things that could be easily addressed to reduce your risk. The last thing we're gonna do is take an, a look at some examples of balance exercises. I'm not going to be able to, to walk you through step-by-step step and coach you about how to do these exercises. So what I instead, what I want you to do is pay attention as you're looking through these slides and see how easy it would be to incorporate these exercises into your daily routine. They don't require a lot of equipment and can be done in the comfort of your own home and incorporated very easily. So again, before you start any physical activity program, you want to make sure to consult with your doctor. It's important to recognize where your level of fitness currently is. If you have not been able to walk around or have been bedridden, it's probably not a good idea to embark on a walking program that's going to require a lot of time. Instead, start small. This is an example of an exercise you can do to increase your lower body strength. The gentleman is standing facing a chair. You can use both hands to hang onto a chair or to a kitchen counter or bathroom counter in front of you or the back of a couch. And you're going to slowly slide one of your legs out backwards, kind of pointing your toe. Your, the motion should be going backwards from your hip. You're going to make sure to do this on both sides. How many of these repetitions you do is going to depend on um, how fit you are. Another example of a strength building exercise is actually, again, holding onto that, that chair or piece of furniture with both hands and then extending your, bending your knee, bringing your heel up toward the back of you, towards your back. So this is um, working with the, the front part of your legs or the quadriceps. Still continuing in a standing position, you're going to then do some side leg raises. Collectively, these three different exercises will help strengthen your lower body and prepare you to maintain your balance, even though you may be pushed or jostled from the side when you're out and about. Toe stands are important too because they, they strengthen your lower leg or your calf muscles. Make sure that you do hold on to the chair when you're doing these or to a piece of furniture so that you don't lose your balance. Balance walks, extending, walking in a straight line in a narrow, in a narrow, along a narrow walkway can be helpful. And lastly, the chair stand. This is a type of a modified squat going from a seated to a standing position. As you can see, this is something that can be easily done in the comfort of your own home. Make sure that before you decide that you're going to, to exercise, that you've had an evaluation by your doctor. Consider if there's any hip or knee issues that could be exacerbated by these movements. But I think it gives you a good idea of some things that you can easily incorporate even 10 minutes a day at your house. If you have any questions, I encourage you to reach out to the Village's Health through the Learning Center. We're happy to answer any questions and point you to resources. Thank you for joining us today.